The human cost of the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine is devastating, with estimates of Russian military casualties varying widely. The figures presented by different sources highlight the complexity of obtaining a definitive number, but they all point to a significant and tragic loss of life. According to data published today from the BBC, uh, the number of confirmed Russian military deaths is over 70,000. This is backed up by Media Zone, and this figure is derived from open sources such as obituaries, funeral announcements, and verified reports. However, it is believed that this is a conservative estimate, as it only includes those deaths that could be independently verified. Other estimates, including those based on data from the Russian National Probate Registry, suggest that the true number of Russian military deaths is between 120,000 and 140,000, and the disparity reflects the challenges again in verifying casualty numbers in a war where transparency is limited, and both sides have strategic interests in controlling the narrative around losses. The Kremlin has avoided acknowledging the full extent of its own losses, and many families in Russia, particularly those in remote or less affluent regions where many of the recruits are coming from, may not have the means or the will to report the deaths of their relatives publicly. Additionally, a large proportion of the Russian forces comprises volunteers, prisoners recruited from prom with promises of freedom, and conscripts from regions with high unemployment rates and foreigners who are, well, migrants, illegal migrants, who are promised full citizenship should they, should they volunteer. Uh, many of these individuals claim afterwards that they've been duped by paperwork they don't understand, that they were motivated by financial interests or coerced into service. They're now among the highest number of casualties. They're told that they're going to get full training. They get a week of indifferent um, uh, square bashing and very poor uniform, and then a thrust literally into the front line. Uh, volunteers who have been deployed in some of the most dangerous front lines, including in the Donetsk region, now account for the largest share of fatalities. The number of wounded is also staggeringly high. The UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office estimated that around 465,000 Russian personnel have been killed or wounded since the invasion began in February 2022. This number includes not only those who have died, but also those who have been incapacitated and are no longer able to fight, a critical, a critical metric that reflects the broader impact on the Russian military's operational capability. For context, these figures represent a significant proportion of the forces Russia initially deployed. The invasion force, the initial invasion force against Kyiv, was estimated at around 190,000 people and the sustained level of casualties has likely degraded Russia's combat effectiveness. The attrition rate has also been exacerbated by poor training and equipment issues, as many newly recruited soldiers and volunteers report inadequate re preparation and subsequent um, substandard gear. And the economic and social impact of these losses is profound. Military expenditure now consumes 40% of the Russian government's spending, which equates to around 6% of its GDP. And this, combined with the high casualty rate, places a significant burden on Russian society, particularly in poorer regions that disproportionately supply the military with recruits. How does it continue to behave in such an extraordinarily cavalier fashion? Well, it continues because information is scarce is sparse. The only information that people get, particularly outside Moscow, across the wide range of the Russian landscape, is through television. And television is saturated with propaganda. And people outside these big cities like St. Petersburg and Moscow do not read. There were efforts to counter the illiteracy rate in the Soviet Union. There's some quite intriguing efforts. But the, uh, the reality today is not about illiteracy. 
It's about habit. And the habit of reading, which is very evident in Moscow and St. Petersburg, where you just uh, nip onto the metro and you will see people reading books in a way that you don't see in the UK or the US. In Moscow, St. Petersburg, there is a very literary society. Outside Moscow, nobody picks up a book. The newspapers, such as they exist, are dominated by, again, propaganda. They're strictly controlled. And they tend to avoid talking about the special military operation. Anything but. So people are working in a vacuum. And people are told, not unlike the post office crisis, uh, when, when there is a casualty, oh, it's just your it's just your son, not anybody else's. He's been unfortunate. No, it's almost everybody's son. Signing up to the Russian military for the special um, military operation is an execution order in its present form. You're either going to be returning in a body bag or you're going to be returning in parts. And the, the extraordinary sums of money that are being offered to volunteers uh, it, is, it, is, it is staggering. So, you know, the impact of these losses goes well beyond the battlefield. The reports indicate that regions across Russia are under pressure to recruit more volunteers, often targeting vulnerable populations, including those with debt or criminal records. Uh, now, if you are taken to court in Russia, you're often offered the option of signing up rather than facing the court case. The court case may be, may be waived if you survive. It may not be. The paperwork, again, is confusing. And people have turned to the media to try to deal with the paperwork. And therefore, again, that information has tended to become public. The recruitment drive has also extended to foreign nationals residing in Russia and to prisons where convicted criminals are offered this chance of a pardon in exchange for their service. But it's all a bit fake. And a promise from the Kremlin is probably not worth the paper that it's been written on. Ukraine, for its part, has been relatively reserved about disclosing its own casualty figures, although estimates from U.S. intelligence suggest that Ukrainian losses are also substantial. The Ukrainian government has made it clear, however, that despite the high cost, they remain committed to defending their sovereignty and have successfully reclaimed significant territories. The scale of Russian military casualties, however, is a somber indicator of the conflict's intensity and the human toll that it has already exacted. So while precise numbers are elusive, and why I think the BBC figure that was published this morning is an underestimate, a significant underestimate, the, the, um, the, 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 the numbers which are getting into the press paint already paint a picture of a military operation that has cost Russia dearly in lives, resources, and ultimately in its standing on the global stage. This is a disaster.